earlier in the year we talked about direct variation. I think this was in chapter one. And we said direct variation was an equation in the form y equals kx, and it has to be exactly in this form, y equals kx. So a direct variation equation could be something like y equals negative 3x. Now, if this equation was changed at all, if it had a plus 2 or something like that, this would not be direct variation. It has to be in the simple form y equals kx, like y equals 1 half x, where k is the constant of variation. But this is all review from chapter 1. Now in this chapter, we're going to learn about inverse variation, which is very similar to direct variation, except it's inverse. For direct variation, <clears throat> as one of the variables increased, the other one increases as well. As y gets larger, x gets larger. Inverse, inverse variation is the opposite. It's written like this, y equals k divided by x y equals k divided by x, and k cannot be equal to 0. In this equation, this k is still the constant of variation. So let's say it tells you what y and x are, and then it says find the constant of variation. So it'll say that y is 7, maybe, and it'll say that x is 4. We set this equal to k. The constant of variation equals 28. Then we're going to rewrite this equation as y equals 28 divided by x. This is our inverse variation equation. And then it'll say something like find y when x equals negative 2. So you just plug in negative 2, 28 divided by negative 2, and y equals negative 14. Now let's look at a word problem example. It says, the number of songs that can be stored on an MP3 player varies inversely with the average size of a song. A certain MP3 player can store 2,500 songs when the average size of a song is 4 megabytes. Write a model that gives the number n of songs that will fit on the MP3 player as a function of the average song size s in megabytes. So it makes sense that this MP3 player can hold less songs if the file sizes are larger. So that's why this is inverse variation. We're just going to use our equation, y equals k over x. And it gives us some information to start with. It says, when there's 2,500 songs, when each song is 4 megabytes. So we're just going to plug that into x and y. 2,500 songs equals k over 4. We're going to solve for k k is equal to 10,000. That's our constant of variation. So writing that back into our equation, we have y equals 10,000 divided by x. Now the only thing we have to pay attention to is it says write a model that gives the number of songs n that will fit on the mp3 player as a function of the average song size s. Well, when we did this originally, we put the number of songs as y, so that's our n. And song size, we used x, so we're just going to write that in s. So the answer it wants is n equals, the number of songs equals 10,000 divided by the average song size, s.